Welcome to Word Connect with Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, a teaching ministry where believers are trained to be established in the truth of God's Word. For more information and free downloads, please visit www.thepastormax.ng. I want to start a series that I call Disciplines for Spiritual Growth. It will be probably a two-part series, and if the Lord gives us the grace, we can go on to the third part, depending on how the Holy Ghost leads us. And uh, this is very important because of setting things that go on in our life, and if we're not careful, we become very casual about our spiritual growth. So if you're in TCC, make sure you're writing because when you go back to your class, you're going to have to review the notes of this Sunday and next Sunday. So make sure you're writing. And everyone else. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. Let's start from there. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. It says, if you are slack, I'm reading the New American Version. If you are slack in the day of distress, your strength is limited. One of the things that I've been doing of recent that the Holy Spirit has been speaking expressly to me about, and like almost all of you know by now, I grew up in a pastor's home. And I've been pastoring since I left the university. So you can as well say that I grew up in a ministry environment. And what that can do to someone is to make you very familiar with scriptures. And intentionally, the Holy Spirit is slowing me down to meditate more on scriptures, not to get familiar with the word. So I want us to take a look at this and think over it deeply. Let's think over it deeply. If you are slack in the day of distress, your strength is limited. Think about it. Many times we feel that when we fail in the day of trouble, it's because the trouble is so big. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that if you fail in the day of distress, it is not the trouble that is big. It is your strength that is limited. The King James Version will say, if you fail in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Many times when challenges come to our life, when problems are around us, we blame everything else. But we don't have that honest conversation with ourselves that, listen, this might be limited strength. Are you following what I'm saying? That I'm not able to overcome this because I've got limited strength. And so, spiritual growth is about empowering your strength. It's about growing your inner man. It's important for us to understand that God assures us of victory. Two things are constant in life. Troubles, number one. Troubles are constant. Number two, victory is constant. The the message translation puts it this way. If you fall to pieces in a crisis, there wasn't much to you in the first place. Look at that. If you fall to pieces in a crisis, there wasn't much to you in the first place.
Think deeply on this word. Limited strength. Limited strength. That means you have a responsibility to grow your strength, to increase the limit of your strength. And how can you do that? It's as you grow spiritually. So, I, I was looking at this, and I, I want to look at the force of desire in spiritual growth. But I wrote a few thoughts down I'd like us to go through. Number one, your spiritual life is like your muscles. Remember what the message translation says. What does it say? If you fall to pieces in crisis, there wasn't much to you in the first place. If you fall to pieces in crisis, there wasn't much to you in the first place. So let's write this down. Your spiritual life is like your muscles. And it will weaken from lack of use. It's what you call atrophy. When you don't use your muscles over a long time, what happens is that it grows weak. It's no longer strong. It grows weak. It's not strong. It's weak. It's flabby. So if you want your muscles to be toned, you have to be intentional about uh, exercise. Increasing strength and agility happens when you exercise it. But this would require pain. It will require effort. It will require weight. And it will require opposition to grow. It will require exercise. It will require you going through the pain barrier. It's going to require effort and weight and opposition to grow. Nobody grows without breaking the pain barrier. Nobody grows without effort. Nobody grows without uh, pain. Nobody grows without opposition. And then I write here that you can hone your muscles through consistent and continual practice. I want you to say the word consistent and continual practice. Those two words are very important in your spiritual growth. Consistency. You know, every year at the beginning of the year, at least before the whole COVID thing, everybody had this exercise goal. Hmm? So you get them. This is the year. Woo. Six pack. I'm burning the fats. I'm burning the weight. Hmm. Want to work on my muscles. You go to the shop, buy all the kits, skipping rope, Nike shoes, good stuff to, to lift the weight. You go to the gym the first day, and you carry all the weights, put on your status, fat burning loading, the year of the six packs, excitement everywhere. You snap with all the machines, snap with the coach. Hmm? Everybody's happy. And then you go to sleep. Your coach says, you have to do this four times a week. He said, no problem. I'm up for it. This is the year. And in the morning, <laughs> you get up. You raise your hand. You feel a bit of pain. You raise your other hand. You feel a bit of pain. You raise your leg. In your mind, you are raising your leg. But the actual state is that your leg did not move. Then you tell yourself, it's who is alive that will get six packs. So you text your coach. Say, I will not be able to make it today. And that's what happened in our spiritual growth. We're, we're excited about it. You hear a message like this, you're excited. You come from camp meeting, you're excited. First night, you go on prayers. You go on the word. The next day, something comes up. Discipline goes back. 
And the truth about life is this. If you're not gaining ground, you're losing ground. So I used to go to the gym. And uh, I, I went consistently three times a week. Over time, I developed the fact that I could carry certain levels of weight, kilograms of weight. And so after a while, I stopped. And um, I went back after a couple of months. So I went immediately, after my warm-up, I went immediately to the weight I used to carry before I stopped. So when I carried the weight, in my mind, I carried it. Through my actions, I carried it. But the weight did not leave where it was. You know what? My coach said, I have to start again. So I realized that the fact that I was not, and you, you need to pay very close attention to this, the fact that I was not consistently practicing, my muscles did not stop at the last weight I carried. I actually was depreciating. And so, to come back to where I stopped, I had to start again. Backward. What am I trying to tell you? If you're not gaining spiritual ground, you are losing. There are no neutrals in the realm of the spirit. I'll give you an example you can all relate with. How many of us have tried to do push-ups before? Hmm? Press up or push-ups. And you do maybe five or ten or twenty. Right? And after a while, you stop. Then you go back to do those push-ups. What happened? Huh? You do two. And I like the way the third one ends up. You will just stretch. I give myself away so you can use me. You realize that when you were doing 20, if you had continued, you'd be doing 30. But because you stopped, you couldn't do 20. You now stopped at 10. What, mean, what it means is that when you stopped, you lost ground. I want you to really, I want that to sink in. When you stop developing spiritually, you're not just in one place. You're losing ground. And so when opposition comes, you realize that even the strength you had before, it's no longer there. It was like Samson. The Bible says he shook himself and wished that God was with him and realized, oh, God isn't here. He assumed. You cannot assume growth. You cannot assume that you're growing. Spirituality without discipline moves in hapless fits and starts. It is sporadic. It's dependent on fluctuating feelings. Huh? So that man is happy. He goes to the gym. And then the day he's not happy, he doesn't go. That's not somebody who wants to become a national champion. If you want to become a national champion, what's going to happen? You will go to the gym regardless of your feeling. You know, you know one reason why Nigeria has never won the World Cup, right? Every Nigerian should know why we have never won the World Cup. You know the reason why? You don't know? What do you think is the reason? Lack of what? Preparation. But you know, you know we pray. When Nigeria is playing like that, you see people, even in the stands, if the camera zoom, you see people speaking in tongues. <laughs> we'll go to camp two weeks to, 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 to the World Cup. Then we can forget our Jesse in the U.S. And then after one match, we'll be crying that they have not paid them bonus. Not, not ready. And you see some other teams, four years down the line, they are preparing. There's a difference between desiring spiritual growth and wishing that you're growing. And I'm going to talk about desire. But I want you to look at this. God does not have favorites. You have to put in the work to grow. If your child, if you give birth to a child and you say, oh, let's feed this child. And the child says, no, I, I don't want to eat, but I believe I will grow. You know that will not happen. Many people want to grow on their terms, not on God's terms. 
Look at this. It requires little to no effort, but also produces little to no sustained growth and towards little to no fruit. If your, your growth is sporadic, is dependent on fluctuating feelings and external circumstances, it will require no effort on your part. Any day you feel like going to the gym, you can go. Any day you don't feel like, you stop. But you're not going to have the results of having proper muscles. There was a footballer uh, that played number nine in one particular country. He was very prolific. He was a prolific striker. Years after, he stopped playing. He appeared in one FIFA event and he was so big. I was wondering, is this the footballer that was the top nine in the world? You know the reason why? The day he stopped going to the field to practice, what happened? The muscles came back in. You know why sometimes it's easy for people to fall in sin? They're not growing spiritually. There's no demand. They're just coasting. And I want to tell you this. Listen very carefully. The devil is wicked. If he has his chance, he will take you out. The Bible says that the the, the, the enemy is like a, lower, a roaring lion seeking whom to devour, not whom to bite. The enemy is not trying to bite you. The enemy is not trying to inflict pain on you. He's trying to kill you. If you roll over for the devil, he'll take you out. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why you have to take your spiritual growth serious because the Bible already told us he's looking for whom to devour. That means there are some people that the enemy cannot devour not because God loves them more than others but because they have taken the time to fortify their spirit and grow spiritually. They have become giants in the faith. So they are undevourable. And I tell you this, in the day of adversity, nothing in the natural can withstand the enemy, only your spiritual growth. Not money, not fame, not whatever. It's only how far you've been able to grow in who you are in Christ, the authority of the written word, that you'll be able to take authority over whatever the enemy brings your way. Hallelujah. Now look at this. I wrote this down. I write it down too. Spiritual growth does not happen by chance. It is by individual choice. And I like the word individual choice. I said it in camp meeting that spiritual growth is not, spirit, is not sexually transmitted. So the fact that you are one flesh with your husband doesn't mean the growth of your husband is your growth. That's why you can have spiritually growing husbands and wives that are not growing. And in the same way also you can have wives that are really on fire for God and the husbands are not growing. We don't share spiritual growth. It has to be by what? <clears throat> individual choice. Everybody say individual choice. Say it one more time. Say individual choice. So spiritual growth does not happen by chance. It is by individual choice. So you have to decide that I want to grow. You have to make that decision. Now, I said, the decision to grow spiritually must be intentionally chosen and then <clears throat> consistently practiced. Persistence is essential. You have to choose and then you have to practice consistently. Gloria Copeland makes a statement it's one of my favorite quotes. In consistency lies the power. If you grow just by your feelings, you will not amount to much in life. And what does your spiritual growth help you to do? Your spiritual growth positions you in a place where God can use you and put you on assignment. If you want to, your child, maybe you've got three kids, one is 21, one is 12, one is 6. If you need help in the house, who would you refer to? The one of 21. Why? Because he's grown, he's more matured. If God wants to get things done in this life, can God depend on you? Or will every little crisis come and put you under? And you know what? If the enemy knows that every little crisis comes and puts you under and you only develop by your feelings, you know what the devil is going to do? He's going to make sure that every day there is something altering your feeling. And you will not grow. 
You know, there are people that just <laughs> planning to pray and something happens, then they don't pray anymore. They're not angry. The whole day goes like that. That day is wasted. They don't read the Bible. That day is gone. I was thinking about, as I was getting ready for the second service, I was thinking about this in, in the office, and I was saying, listen, may we not allow success make us become spiritually lazy. And, and what came to my mind is, is someone who's pursuing after God, going after God, and God has blessed you, and you have a very big house. That's the picture that came to my mind. You have a very big house. And in trying to put that house in order, in trying to make that house beautiful, in trying to make that house clean, it takes the whole of your time every day that you do not have time to spend with God anymore. The same thing as a minister. The ministry can grow and you're caught up in administration. You're caught up in other things and you're not spending time to grow spiritually. And that's, that explains the reason sometimes when certain things happen to certain ministers at a level, people wonder, so what happened? No matter how big you are, you have to grow daily. It has to become a discipline. Everybody say discipline. It has to become a discipline, not a feeling. If it's still a feeling, you will not grow. I feel like praying. I don't feel like praying. No, you have to pr pray whether you feel like praying or not. We, we pray and we know God hears us because we pray according to the word, not according to our feeling. Look at this. This is very interesting. Just as when you decide to go to the gym, even when you don't feel like it, you invariably feel awesome by the end of your workout. Rather than waiting to feel like walking on practicing your spiritual discipline, you must walk on it anyway, knowing the feelings will follow. So, the feelings do not lead you, you lead the feelings. There are times I've read the Bible when I didn't feel like reading the Bible, but I have to read the Bible. And sometimes you don't have to buy certain things that make you feel very... Yeah, you know people say, instead of reading nine chapters and you don't understand anything, why not just read one verse and get something out of it? And you know what I tell, tell people in that situation? Read the nine chapters and concentrate on the one verse. Because you know what happens? After you do that for a long time, you will not be reading passages of the Bible. You'll just be looking for one verse. You know, have you ever tried, you shouldn't do it, but have you ever tried helping someone in the exam hall that does not know the the, the subject. They are more difficult to help. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say, oh, uh, skeletal system, da 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 explain. Then I say, please, I don't know it. You know, I say, okay, skeletal system is this and this. They say, eh-eh. I say, guy, with that, you should be able to write something. He said, no, just tell me. I don't want to make mistake. If you're not careful, they'll copy your matric number. Are you following what I'm saying? But if it's different, if someone has read and they forgot, if you give them a clue, oh, skeleton, oh, yeah, 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 they will even tell you, oh, it's okay, it's okay, I remember now. I, and they would put it down. It's the same thing. When the Bible says the Holy Spirit will bring scriptures to your remembrance, some of you in the midst of crisis, the Holy Spirit, you know, as the, the Bible says, the Holy Spirit brooded over the earth and God spoke. The Holy Spirit broods over your soul, empty, broods your spirit, no word. <laughs> this is me, this is not Bible. The Holy Spirit goes back to God and says, we have a difficult case. You know, it's like the Holy Spirit, you know, in, in those days when people want to remember stuff, then they hit their head. It's like the Holy Spirit hits. Empty. No scripture. How will God give you victory? But if you have been studying scriptures, if you've been persistent with scriptures, how many of you have had that experience? When something comes up, a scripture comes out of your spirit. Where was that scripture? You had it in you when you were practicing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You know, sometimes you tell people, confess the word. And what they are, not conf what they are confessing is not the word. It's just nice saying. Huh? You know, sometimes you tell people, say, say, say the word, say it is well. So one day I asked someone, I said, what is well? well do, do you understand the background to that story? They don't even know where it is in the Bible. 
And I can ask a lot of Christians, where is that it is well in the Bible? You know, a lot of Christians don't know where it is. <laughs> I know you don't want to answer because you might be one of those Christians. But you know, we just say it, right? We just say it because we just assume by saying it is well, things will be well. If you're not found, listen to this. God will not shift the rules because it's you. You have to learn to be founded on the word. In the midst of circumstances, there have got to be a word you are anchoring your soul on. If not, listen to me, saints of God, the devil will mess you up. You will not believe what he will do to you. You will be surprised. The enemy is on the leash to cause riots and destruction and death. God brings life. And there's a process of life. That's why your growth is important. Your growth should be prioritized. For your own good. And for the good of those around you. Praise the name of the Lord. The number one enemy of spiritual growth is feelings. Write that down. The number one enemy of spiritual growth is feelings. If a man goes by his feelings, he will never grow spiritually. I had a mentor who told me one time <laughs> he sat down a day, almost a day and a half reading the New Testament from Matthew to Revelation. He only got up to eat, got up to walk around. That's discipline. And if you see him quoting scriptures today, you'll be amazed. Do you realize in school, those who practice mathematics the most, they had the best result in maths? Huh? I, had, I had very good grades in literature, English literature. You know the reason I had very good grades in English literature? I love reading novels. So before the beginning of the term, they'll tell us we're reading... Um, whatever we're reading, let's, let me use probably all the novels, okay? They'll, they'll just give up. Maybe things fall apart. They'll write it so that your parents will buy it. Immediately they buy my things fall apart. I would have read it two, three times before, the, before we go to school. So by the time they are doing literature review, the whole book is in my head. But my mathematics exam, I will practice a night to the exam so that I will not forget. Then there are some I'll practice early in the morning. So that, then there are some that is five minutes to the exam. Then there are some that when they say, question paper is coming. <laughs> because you are just looking at it. So that maybe the question paper comes and you turn it up. Then you just see and then you deposit. And I never did very well in mathematics. Because the laws will not be bent for me. But then there were other people who didn't do the same with literature. They didn't like reading novels. But they liked solving mathematics. What was the difference? During exam, you also see them you know, trying to go through the story. So what happened to this one? So what happened to this one? It's the same. I applied myself to a direction and I got the result effortlessly. I, they applied themselves in another direction and they got the results effortlessly. Do not admire any faith giant. Every faith giant is someone who applied himself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You know, you see this man, this big man of God, you can also be that. You apply yourself the way they apply themselves. They can inspire you, but it's not a superhuman thing that nobody can achieve. If you would put in the work, you would grow to become a giant. Why? How do you grow to become a giant? You feed yourself giant food. And God's word is giant food. God's word is food for champions. God is not a respecter of persons. We know you've been blessed by this telecast. To become a partner, please call plus 234-805-888-7575. Pastor Maxwell's messages are available in over a dozen books and a thousand audio and video formats. To purchase this title and other titles by Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, please call plus 234-805-888-7575 or send us an email, office at Pastor Max.ng. Also available are free downloads from www.thepastormax.ng. God bless you.